Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. This is part three of the custom DIY 3D background. Now, hopefully you've watched the first and second part of this series. If you haven't, then I would recommend stop watching this video and go back and watch uh, the first one. And I'll put a link of it up here. And then when you're done with that, then obviously go and watch the second one and I will put a link of that up here. So once you've watched those two, and hopefully you've done that already, you know where we are, you're caught up, and we are making a 3D background for a 4D breeder, which is a three foot long tank. But we're doing a little bit different where we're having the rock wall extend out of the tank. So anyway, here you can see the background, um, and you can see in relation to myself how large this thing is. It is super, super lightweight. It is made out of foam and there is one rock in here. Now the next step is going to make this a lot heavier and that's going to be important to help us keep this thing in place when we put it in a tank with water because it's very buoyant and no matter how much silicone we use um, you still could have some issues. So we want to make this something a little bit less buoyant um, but if you did use a lot of silicone you could silicone this into the back of an aquarium. So anyway, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this back in the mold and I'm going to make some concrete and we're going to apply layers of concrete to this and I'll talk about that process. So um, one thing that I will say during this uh, phase of the construction is make sure that you're wearing some clothes that you don't care about. Um, I do care about the sweatshirt so I'm gonna take this off. I've got a t-shirt underneath that I don't care about very much and I've got like some old sweatpants that I use like working on cars and some old shoes. So you don't wanna do this in anything nice because if you get concrete or cement on those clothes then it can be kinda of messy and hard to get out. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get set up and show you what the concrete phase of this project looks like because this is really what's gonna make this 3D background come to life and make it look a lot more natural and hopefully at this point you then you'll say, wow, that's really, kind of what I was expecting to see. Now one thing that I do want to mention before I start this concrete process is to let you know that you do have some options. I happen to like using concrete because it is more natural looking. Um, I just feel like over the long run um, it does hold up a lot better but there are some kind of downsides to concrete. It can be a little bit messy to work with. It takes a long time to cure. You can have some cracks that appear in the in the background and that's happened to me before that is natural and um, it's heavier. So in some cases there might be a situation where you don't want a heavy background depending on the kind of tank you have or where you're putting this uh, decoration you might just want to have it um, you know like for me like I've made islands before so I wouldn't make an island out of concrete I would just make it out of foam I wouldn't put any concrete on it. So you do have the option of painting it. So. Here are um, some paints that I have. This is a uh, paint by Krylon. It is called Fusion. So all the research that I've done um, is that the Fusion Krylon paint is aquarium safe once it is fully dry and cured. So um, you can do your own research and a lot of, uh, there is a lot of chatter out there about using Krylon Fusion um, in you know these type of situations that it is fish safe. So. I have used it in the past. You do want to make sure that you follow the instructions. Let it completely cure and you want to also let it gas off, meaning that you don't want any of that paint smell before you put it in water. So um, that is an option if you guys do oops, want to use paint. Um, you don't have to use concrete. You can do the painting process. But I am going to use concrete because in my experience I like it better. And I've even painted over the concrete. So that is something that you can do if you don't want that gray concrete look. If you do want to have some browns and some greens and stuff like that, you can paint on top of the concrete once it's uh, fully cured. But that does take a long time. Another thing I want to mention is if you haven't worked with concrete before, maybe get with somebody that's worked with concrete before that knows how to mix it to get it to the right consistency. Um, and can give some pointers along the way. The most important thing with concrete is not necessarily mixing it and applying it, but the waiting period afterwards. So you really need to make sure that you cure the concrete and that means keeping the concrete wet. And um, we'll talk a little bit about that. I'm gonna spray mine with water, but if you've ever seen anybody working with concrete, pouring a sidewalk, a patio, whatever, you notice how they'll lay it out 
get everything set. Once it's starting to dry a little bit, they're gonna start hosing it off and they'll do so all the time every day to keep it damp. So that's what we're gonna have to do with this concrete background as well. So that is one process that makes this a little bit more difficult if you don't have this experience. Um, but really it's not that hard. I am gonna show you how to do it. And uh, because we're working with such a small piece, even things like wet paper towels or an old dirty towel that you don't care about, if you can just soak that and lay it on top, that's gonna work out for you. So I've got everything set and ready to go um, over here in this uh, empty protein powder container. I have my concrete mixed. Um, I like using these because I just cut the top off and uh, then I've got like a little extra thing for me to um, use for cleaning and maybe ho holding the brush, etc. The other thing that we're gonna use, we're gonna use a paintbrush in this process to kind of help spread the concrete around. And one thing that I should mention if you don't have experience working with cement is that the dust is very fine and you do not want to breathe it. So take precautions. Um, as I'm mixing, I always wear a mask. I do have a heavy duty respirator, but this is just fine for blocking the particles. And um, I normally don't wear gloves, but for the purposes of this video, I am gonna wear some um, rubber gloves um, to keep my hands clean. Concrete can be very drying. It can dry out your skin. Um, and then the other reason is because I'm operating a camera. I don't wanna have to keep washing my hands to stop recording and turn off the light, etc. So I can just quickly take off the gloves and be able to turn the camera on and off. So. Um, gloves are optional. I do recommend them. A mask would also be uh, highly advised when you're mixing your concrete. The last thing I want to talk about this concrete real quickly is that it is very thin. I didn't mix it thick, so it's a thinner uh, mixture right now. And that's because I want my initial base to be very thin. We're gonna be painting this on. Um, it's gonna be a very thin layer. And I also want this to really fall down into the cracks in small holes, all that porous area, um, those gaps, et cetera, in this foam to kind of really fill in those areas. So later on, the uh, following layers will be a little bit thicker and our last layer will be the thickest, um, but just wanted to mention that. Okay, well now you can see that uh, pretty much the entire background is covered. Again, this is just the initial thin base coat. I'm gonna go through and apply a couple more coats and as I go through, they're gonna get a little bit thicker. Um, but you can kind of see what it's starting to look like. Now, because it's so glossy and shiny, you're probably not getting a chance to really see what it looks like. Maybe this angle's a little bit better where you can see that the dip, different uh, depth and texture there. But anyway, basically this is the uh, next step, is just to uh, cover the entire thing in concrete, make sure that you fill in all the little gaps and cracks. There's still some holes here that I need to fill, and I do need to obviously do a lot more filling, but um, just kind of wanted to capture this first part on camera. I'll probably just quickly do the next couple phases and uh, get you caught up here uh, when it's all done. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added a couple more layers of uh, concrete. Um, still very wet. 
Um, but don't forget that we have the play sand. So there you can see the bag of play sand over there on the right. And now I'm going to um, use the play sand and sprinkle it around the background. Now this is kind of an optional um, step of the process. You don't need to use sand. I like to use sand because it adds a little bit of texture to the background, to the concrete. Um, obviously it's sand, so you're adding a little bit of sandy uh, sandy texture. Um, but also I find that it helps for the uh, concrete to be mixed with sand a little bit. Um, you could mix it as you're mixing the concrete, but I like to kind of just sprinkle it on top and um, put it where I want it. And that can really kind of, you know, regulate the exact amount of sand I'm gonna use. And then also after I'm done with this process, we're gonna go ahead and put a final coat of cement on top of this. All right, there we go. So I've added some sand. Um, I might go through a little bit later and add a little bit more in certain pockets. Um, obviously it's super tan right now. This is the play sand. It's tan because it's not matching the concrete, but once we mix it together um, with my top coat, then um, it will all be gray. If you don't want to uh, have it um, all one uniform color, you could sprinkle some of, this, uh, some of the sand on at the very end and um, that will actually give you kind of a two-tone look. So some of the sand will stick, obviously it will become embedded in the concrete, and then a lot of it will fall off once you're done and you uh, take this out and shake it off. Some of it will be embedded, some of it will fall off, and then you'll kind of have a natural kind of gray and brown look to the background as some of it is going to, um, some of that sand's going to uh, stay on there. And I'm actually liking the look of this do uh, kind of dual two-tone um, background. So I think after I do the final coat of cement, I might go through with some sand, dust it on top, and then uh, just do what I just told you guys where you can have kind of that natural sandy look. Okay, well I am done with the final layer of concrete. If you're looking at it, you can see that it's very thick. Um, all those little holes that were there before are filled in. The reason why is I did kind of a more traditional concrete layer for the, for the last layer. Um, obviously I added less water, but I also added a lot of sand to the mixture in the bucket um, just to make it more of a thick mortar style. Now for those of you that are concrete people or you know stonemasons or whatever, yes, I know that play sand is not the right type of sand as far as um, true structural rigidity, concrete strength. Um, you should use like a concrete sand. Um, but this is such a small uh, piece of work that we're working on. It's not like we're building like a foundation or anything. It's such a small um, item that we're working with. And because it's not gonna be load bearing or anything like that, the play sand is just fine. So it is a lot thicker now, more kind of mortar style. Um, I didn't put concrete on the inside in these caves. So we're gonna darken those up with paint later on down the road. Um, now you can also see some brush strokes and the reason why is because this is a lot thicker than before. So you can see the lines. So all I'm gonna do is kind of go through with my brush and just make all these lines go away, my brush strokes go away, just so it looks a lot more natural. And after that, I'm gonna take that sand that I talked about earlier and just sprinkle it in a few areas just to kind of get some different color variations. And then when it's all done, we'll, you know, we'll, uh, you know, uh, be able to um, knock off the excess sand. So the next step after this is um, kind of, uh, once I sprinkle some sand on, I'm gonna leave it alone for a while. And then I've gotta come back and I've gotta keep this thing wet. That is the most important part of this process is I'm gonna have to come through with a spray bottle and spray this thing off. Now, I did mention the towel thing earlier. Um, in a couple of days, I'm gonna be out of town and I've gotta keep this thing wet for several days. So what I'm gonna do on the day that I'm out of town, cause I'm not gonna be able to spray this thing down every few hours, is I'm gonna soak some towels in a bucket and just lay them across here so that while I'm gone for the you know 16 hours or whatever, it will stay nice and damp because you really want this to very, very slowly cure. You don't want this to dry quickly or you will have a ton of cracking. Now it's not the end of the world. We are going to have some cracking, but you know, still um, you wanna minimize and mitigate that as much as possible. So anyway, um, I'm gonna just go through and tamp this down with a brush and add a little bit of sand. You probably won't, well, I'm not gonna be filming again for a couple of days. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, maybe see the final result and 
<clears throat> from there, we will uh, put it in the tank. 